JISC is um, a company that works for all the university colleges and skills sector in the UK, making sure that um, they maximise the use of technology in order to provide um, a better service for their students and learners. We have um, a new way of deciding what work we're going to invest uh, our customers' resources into and that it, we've used a process called co-design where we've got stakeholders from um, different parts of the sector together and they've requested that we do this work on learner analytics because they can see it's an important emerging area that um, they want to have technical resources to uh, utilise to help their students. So the um, co-design process has come up with a number of activities that they'd like us to get involved with. And one of those is about creating a code of practice that the sector can adopt. Um, and then they can help, uh, that would help them understand what is it that they need to do at an institutional level in order to make sure that they're following all the best um, practice and guidance on how to actually implement learning analytics within their institution. And that would be based on um, national, European and global um, best practice and uh, therefore indicate what sort of policies that they need to consider under different topics. So, for example, data protection or ethical issues um, would encompass various different policies. Um, I think we have um, worked a lot with Case, uh, Lay, sorry, over the um, last few months in terms of uh, developing that code of practice. So we have taken on board comments from other European countries and um, certainly looking to different um, continents as well to see what that they've been doing in, in this area in terms of guidance to their sectors about uh, how to implement learning analytics and the sorts of issues that they need to consider, um, which would include their local policies. I think uh, data ownership I think crops up again and again and it's because it's uh, going to be used more transparently. I think people want more open data and more transparent use of data and so that's going to throw up challenges um, to institutions about um, who owns the data and who has access to the data um, and, and especially in terms of anonymity and commercialization of the data. So um, what sort of policies are there to protect individuals and institutions when they start analysing the data and creating predictive um, insights based on that analysis? There's another strand of work that we're um, involved in in trying to increase the capacity of the sector in understanding some of the challenges behind data analytics and um, what uh, skills different staff members as well as the students need to acquire in order to um, do the analytics and understand what the um, insights can produce out of the analytics and what is a safe insight or what is um, potentially uh, misinformation. Well I think with increased mobility because of um, employability across the uh, EU there is going to be a lot more demand for data sharing across different jurisdictions and so I think it is important um, for it to be considered at a higher level um, than national and so I see that that is where the EU should be considering um, what are the potential opportunities as well as threats behind um, analytics within uh, certain na nations. There is sort of value in data and um, it's who has control over um, eliciting the value out of that data potentially could change depending on the individual situation. And if policies aren't considered, then um, people might find that they've given away a lot of data and information about themselves that they'd like to retract, but actually they're not able to in the digital environment. Whereas before, um, it, was, it might have been a problem, but um, it was relatively local uh, because if it was stored in a sort of um, manual or paper-based format, whereas when it's digital it can move um, around the globe and can be um, retained 
in a different system, so it can be very difficult to um, uh, delete information about themselves or perhaps get access to information um, that is being retained about them in different uh, systems and different countries and jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. So I think those sorts of uh, challenges could unfold over the years as, as um, it's used more within institutions. I think there could be um, discussions around formative learner analytics as well as summative learner analytics or, or data um, that uh, we didn't really sort of touch on today and so there might be different types of data that need to be considered um, and have different policies applied to them.